one of the things that can really help you with um, strain in your neck is a recognition of your tush, your pelvis, which um, if you start to look at the structure of your body, you can see that if this is your neck, the bottom of your neck is connected to your pelvis. And so whatever is happening with the weight of your pelvis is going to have a profound effect on the musculature and support for your neck and of course for the weight of your head. So the first two mobile alignment points you might already know if you've been following along with the videos are the nose and the back of your skull. And just to maybe touch those two points on yourself, the back of the skull is uh, kind of hard to find because it's under muscle, but you can guess. And uh, if you dip your nose slightly or you turn it to the left or the right, what you'll notice about the back point is that it moves because they're just both spots on the surface of a round three-dimensional part of you that has a lot of weight. The second two points are the tailbone, which you can touch. Probably don't want a whole lot of people in your life touching that for you. And your pubic bone in the front right here. And what you'll notice about those two points, one of them connects to this bony structure, which is the spine, and the other one connects to this bony structure, which is the pelvis. But those two parts of you do pretty much go together. So today's tip is about, in order to have ease in your neck, if you move the weight of your head, so in other words, if one of these points shifts and the other point shifts, your head is, the weight of your head is moving. It's moving in relationship to the earth. <laughs> That's what you do all day. And so one of the problems that a lot of people have with neck tension is that when they move their head, all of this is being held stiff. So today's tip is for the pubic bone and the tailbone to be allowed to move. So that means if I look a little bit over to the left, my pubic bone shifted a little bit to the other side. It just did it naturally to counterbalance my weight. If I look a little bit over to the right, it's natural for the weight of my pelvis to shift. And when the weight of my pelvis shifts, that means that this point, the pubic bone point, is moving. Or also, the tailbone is moving. So when those two points move, they move together. And this can be very freeing, say, if I want to move an object, say I want to shift this chair, and I let the weight of my head go that way, I can let the weight of my pelvis go back to shift the weight of the chair. So if I want to push the chair forward, I don't have to do it with my neck. I can actually shift the weight of my pelvis back and my spine stays long and I can use my arm for the action. But none of that can happen if you don't let your pelvis move. This goes for sitting and standing too. I have to get further back. That in order for me to get my weight into the chair, the weight that's balancing between these two points needs to move forward, but the weight of my pubic bone needs to move back.
same thing. Or if I'm going to shift my weight in the chair here, say I want to come back in the chair, this part of me is going to come back. So this part of me is going to need to shift too. So the weight of my pelvis and the weight of my head are always counterbalancing each other. And um, it's tremendously reassuring to have your pelvis under you and know that um, it's supporting you and that it's supporting your spine and that your spine is supporting your head and that you don't have to work hard in your neck for that to happen. So I hope that's helpful. Peace and love. Take good care of yourself out there.